I call Baroness Grendy to ask the first oral question. I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. Uh, Lord uh, Greenhouse. I point to my relevant residential and commercial property int interests as set out in the register. There has been a six month stay on possession proceedings and we have established an unprecedented financial pra package. This includes spending over £39.3 billion on the furlough scheme and boosting the welfare system by more than £9 billion. There are now new court arrangements and notice periods of six months, except in the most serious cases, to help keep tenants in their homes over winter. Uh, Does the Minister accept that this is a promise that cannot be met if mandatory evictions have resumed and infections are rising? What protects tenants in tiers one and two? Tenants like Michelle in Nottingham, who says rent alone each month is £575. I lost my job in March due to the virus and I'm now trying to survive on universal credit. But I'm getting into debt with bills and barely have anything left for food. How do we now keep her safe? My Lords, I repeat that there's been an unprecedented level of measures to support renters and we will continue to do what is needed to keep as many as possible safe. But it's fair to say that there will be cases where renters will have to um, potentially uh, seek other, other, other places to live. Lord Mackenzie of Framelgate. I beg your pardon. Baroness uh, uh, Warwick of Undercliff. My Lords, I declare my interest as set out in the register. I'm glad that housing associations have said clearly that they won't evict anyone suffering because of this crisis and they're supporting residents in accessing financial help. Can the Minister say more about what he will do to encourage landlords to act with compassion in the coming months? And does he accept that with a record 8 million people in England in housing need, the best way to protect renters in the longer term from unaffordable housing costs is to build homes for social rent? Well, my Lords, um, I, I commend re resident social, so re the uh, RSLs for their leadership and social landlords. Uh, but I would also point out in the wider sector that 89% of tenants are paying their rent in full according to the latest data and only 70%, 7 are in um, uh, uh, rent arrears and 4% of tenants uh, have arrangements in place with their landlords. So the vast majority of landlords seem to be acting in a sensible way according to the data that we have. Lord Mackenzie of Ramgate. My Lords, the, the welfare of tenants should be safeguarded fairly without destroying the financial viability of innocent landlords who have an interest, clearly, in retaining good tenants. With rent arrears going above £400 million and to avoid future homelessness crises, has the government considered developing an equitable solution for both tenants and landlords by providing a financial package to pay off rent arrears built up as a direct result of the coronavirus? Well, I, my Lords, I pointed to the unprecedented amount of support that we've given to renters, including raising the local housing alliance, which is very important as well. I mean, um, we, we, the housing, benefit, housing benefits bill and universal credit housing elements total well over £20 billion. We need to get the balance, however, between rights of renters, but also to protect landlords and safeguard their interests as well. I'm going to cook them. My Lords, my noble friend rightly refers to the recent generous increase in the local housing allowance, which will help tenants struggling with their rent. But this increase uh, runs out at the end of the year, and unless further action is taken, uh, LHAs will revert to the previous less generous levels in 2011. Would my noble friend agree that that would be a retrograde step, uh, leading to an increase of some £54 a week for some tenants? And the right thing to do would be to keep with the 30% percent pent uh, percentile at current market rents. My Lords, my noble friend makes very reasoned uh, points. Um, I point out that the um, increase to the 30th percentile uh, of the local housing reliance will remain in place for the duration of the year until March 2021. Uh, Lord Roberts of Flandreau, no? My, my Lords, in 1942, William Beveridge fought five giants they were squalor, want, ignorance, and the other two as well. Now, he would now, I think, make a sixth, and the sixth one would be homelessness. 
that in order to make keep a secret, and that is a word of the Chancellor, a sacred duty, we have to make sure that every person has a home. Because homelessness is and outside the, 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 this virus time. Um, 57,000 homeless families in the UK. Of those, about 6,000 are in Wales. Shouldn't we be ashamed of ourselves if we're not able to tackle this with the same vigour that we tackled the squalor and the disease and the ignorance in the past? Will the minister give me an assurance that he will make every effort possible to make sure that this homelessness problem, not only now, but in the future, short term and long term, will receive absolute first attention. Uh, my Lords, the uh, mission to end rough sleeping is very much at the heart of what this government is trying to achieve. And I point to the Everyone In programme led by Dame Louise Casey and also the Next Pre uh, Steps programme with, with, with significant support to end rough sleeping. And that is our endeavour as a government. We have short supplementaries, uh, please, Lord Flight. Um, my Lords, I think we all understand the reasons for the government uh, uh, seeking protection uh, for renters affected by COVID-19. Uh, but as, as others have mentioned, uh, should there not also be some form of protection uh, for landlords uh, suffering as a result of COVID-19? A lot of landlords are... Uh, elderly people, their source of uh, income, it, it may be one property and the rental from that. Uh, but uh, I think it, it, you have to look at both, both renter and uh, those uh, who are renting. My Lords, we are seeking to get that balance right, and I thank my noble friend for raising the importance of um, protecting the interests of landlords in the, in the relationship between landlord and tenant. Uh, Lord Bird. If we take the bigger issue that is behind all of this discussion about evictions, we have the fact that of the of the seven G7 countries, Britain is the only country that is removing the supports in this period of COVID-9, ending them at the end of this year. And could we not take a, a, a leap out of the IMF's recommendation that we spend, spend, spend and keep the receipts? Can the minister go to Mr Boris Johnson and say, can he save our children and can we save our children's children from homelessness and from degradation? This government has the responsibility, if only to follow what the G7 countries are doing, which is carrying on with their support way and beyond the period that the government's offered. My Lords, um... This government is spending a considerable and unprecedented degree, but we must rec remember that at the end of this pandemic, it will be our children and our children's children that will be paying back the debt. Lord Kennedy of Southwark. My Lords, I refer the House to my relevant interests as set out in the Register. It has been a year since the government closed this consultation on its new deal for renting that would lead to a bill to end evictions for no reason. The Government are now saying they will bring forward the promised Renters Reform Bill only when, and I quote, there is a sensible and stable economic and social terrain on which to do it. So can I ask the Noble Lord, how is the Government defining a sensible and stable economic and social terrain? What is it measuring and how will it know when the conditions for moving forward with the Bill are met? And if the Noble Lord cannot say today how the criteria for moving forward will be met and defined, can he write to me let me know? My Lords, our focus has obviously been uh, on supporting renters during the pandemic, and I'll write to the Noble Lord on that matter. Uh, Baroness uh, Scott of Needham Market. My Lords, the cost of temporary accommodation for homeless people is already in excess of a billion pounds, and this can only be set to rise as hardship increases. Has the government done any assessment of whether it wouldn't actually be better value as well as more humane to put the money into helping people stay in their own homes, for example, using schemes similar to that in Spain? My, my Lords, thank you for that helpful policy point pointing to Spain to spe about the Spanish experience, and I'll write to the, uh, the Noble Baroness on that matter. Lord Carrington. My Lords, I declare my interests as set out in the register. 
What measures are proposed to protect landlords, many of whom have mortgages and ongoing repair costs, from the hardship imposed upon them by those tenants who are financially able but have decided they are not willing to pay their rents in the knowledge that they can shelter under new government under the new government umbrella from any immediate consequences my lords uh, that is precisely the point why the evictions moratorium had to end uh, we had to protect uh, landlords from egregious rent arrears but also from cases of abandonment and fraud antisocial behavior and in the social sector um, domestic abuse. So that is precisely right why that we, uh, the judiciary called for a start on um, the proceedings, but to focus on the most difficult cases first.